Hello, welcome to Intro to Character and Creature Design. My name is Eric Ryan. I uh, work at Sony Santa Monica. Um, I'll be taking you through the uh, steps of creating a realistic and unique character. Um, we'll go through thumbnails, we'll go through um, rough images, a little basic lighting, um, just to get you warmed up for uh, the class that comes after this, which is Character and Creature Design 1. Um, so this course is all in kind of preparation for uh, a more advanced class and kind of gets you warmed up um, between that. Um, so I hope you look forward to it and uh, I'll try to give you all of my insight into the Character and Creature Design process. Thank you. Hello, this is week one of Intro to Character and Creature Design, and um, I'm going to get started here with some uh, thumbnails. <clears throat> um, so, what I like to do uh, starting off is just kind of uh, purge myself of like old ideas or ideas I already have in my head kind of get those out of the way um, uh, so that, you know, as I come up with new thumbnails, new ideas, um, I'm uh, forced to kind of think differently and kind of think out of the box and also see what I've already done <clears throat> um, so that way I don't make the same mistake. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys know um, what I'm, what character I'm doing yet? It's uh, Mr. Freeze from Batman. Um, Mr. Freeze. The story behind him is that he um, uh, is a was a doctor, a cryogenics doctor, I, I think a researcher. Uh, he, I'm, I'm not sure the chronology of things, but I think he uh, got into some accident. Um, with you know when he was experimenting, which is a typical uh, villain or hero scenario, and um, it, it um, caused him to have his body it, basically he can't live in normal temperatures. He can only live in super cold temperatures, and uh, hence his suit, uh, which freezes him, keeps him kind of uh, cold, I should say. Um, and his wife is dying from a disease um, and he's trying, and I think part of the reason why he was doing his research, what motivated him to do cryogenics research was his, his wife was uh, dying from <clears throat> a disease. And so he's trying to, I think he ended up uh, freezing her to pres preserve her, stop the disease from spreading, something like that. And he's, he's looking for the cure. Um, and I think, I think she, she either, she might, yeah, I guess she's dead already or something like that, but the idea is that he's going insane, and he, all, the only thing he wants to do, um, and he's not going to let anybody stop him, is to bring his wife back, find the cure, bring his wife back. Um, so, that being said, um, Mr. Freeze basically needs a suit to live, that's the important thing right now um, and <clears throat> he has weapons to keep people from stopping him uh, you know stopping him on his quest to save his wife um, <clears throat> so that's this this first uh, drawing I did really quickly is to kind of just get that typical mr. freeze look out of my head um, and it, it may take me a couple of thumbnails to uh, fully get it out of my head, but um, that was kind of a first quick idea. Um, the point of thumbnails is to um, experiment. Um, it's really to uh, find by using different shapes, different tones, uh, and, and doing things very quickly, just experiment and without committing yourself too much to any, any particular drawing. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
see what um, you may, you know, experiment with what you may not have thought of um, and kind of let your uh, mind work organically um, so that, you know, you're not um, coming up with things that you've already thought of or things somebody else already thought of. Um, it's all about kind of purging yourself of unoriginal ideas and coming up with new ones. Uh, ways to do that, um, you know, if you might, you know, might have, you know, quote unquote writer's block or an art artistic type of block. Um, ways to do that or, you know, you can either try doing it just straight through thumbnails or you can go on Google um, uh, or any kind of art book, like art of book, uh, of artists that have created things in the past to kind of help inspire you. Um, <clears throat> or any any book. I mean, for this guy, you could have used a, a book on, you know, aerospace engineering or um, uh, any kind of uh, book on machinery or animals or anything um, to, to help create this character. Um, so it's all about kind of just observing, uh, finding things out there that you may not have thought of, let your mind kind of be free. <clears throat> and uh, kind of letting letting it relax a little bit, if that makes sense, um, and, and not being so concerned about making good draw good drawing. Um, I had a teacher, uh, my, my back when I was learning, um, Carlo Arellano. Actually, he works for the same uh, website. <clears throat> um, he. Um, uh, basically, you know, kind of actually forgot my train of thought. Um, anyways, regardless, this uh, this character is. Uh, I'm trying to, um, you know, give him a weapon, uh, put tones in different areas. Um, Part of why I do things in black and white is to just break things up. You want to be able to um, not have things get monotonous. You don't want to have uh, his whole body be very dark or, or very light. Um, you want to use tones to break things up. And then, you know, this guy doesn't necessarily have to be a dark color. He could end up being light in the end. It's just kind of a way for you to um, break up the monotony of uh, his look. Um, still trying to remember what uh, Carlos said to me. Don't come to me. He's a really good teacher, by the way. Um, so yeah, uh, I. One thing you'll notice I don't do, um, and uh, I'll continue this process, is I don't really use photos that much, very, very rarely, and especially for thumbnails. I think, particularly for me, anyways, my opinion is that thumbnails, you know, the, the kind of purpose of a thumbnail is to experiment and, and, and be organic and be very loose. And I think thumbnails are, uh, for me, anyways, photos tend to inhibit that. Um, I feel like uh, I become too reliant on what any kind of shape or tone that's in that thumbnail. I just want to toss things out. I mean, the, the, you know, for me, the purpose is to be free and um, not get a hunkered down in one, any, one particular look or direction. Um, Another thing is too with what I do with my thumbnails is I try to get I really try to get a lot of variation. Um, that's one of the main tenets for me. Um, I used to get you know ridiculed for that in my past job <laughs> for not having uh, enough variations. Like everything would look too similar. You notice the first two images here, um, Mr. Freeze images I had created are very similar and so and I'll you know go back and fix that and add little things 
and you see how I go back to that um, image as well, like the second one. I don't. I know that it's too similar, and there's things I want to do to it to kind of move it um, forward so it doesn't feel like the same. So sometimes we'll go back to thumbnails and, and touch them up and see if there's something else there, um, especially ones that look too too alike. Uh, another thing, just on a technical um, level, you'll see that I'm using um, <clears throat> the lasso tool to kind of help create shapes. And I've learned um, that the lasso tool really kind of gives you cool, crisp looking lines. Um, but at the same time, it I use I tend to use the, um, which one is it? I don't know what it's called exactly. It's not the um, polygonal one. It's the the free lasso tool or whatever it is. Um, the more the one that's more elliptical shaped, uh, just so I can get. It's almost like drawing a shape. <clears throat> uh, it's very loose feeling, um, and so it gives me the nice um, organic shapes that I've actually you know drawn. Um, <clears throat> and then you can just fill it in and as you fill it in if you just kind of um, go uh, kind of counter to the lines that you've created with your lasso tool you'll get uh, in, in like a perpendicular way you'll get this cool kind of texture a uh, very quick texture um, <clears throat> the idea here with the third one um, was just like you know hey let's just be super crazy okay it doesn't have to be in a human outfit necessarily and I end up realizing later on that I'm supposed to be doing a humanoid character <laughs> so I kind of bring him back to earth a little bit and and try to have him follow the um, the, the class uh, a little bit more so try to stick to the human look humanoid look um, and uh, I'm sorry, I want to apologize now because he does end up taking on somewhat of a, a mech quality. Um, and uh, I think he really, the reason why is because the, based on his story that I told you, it just makes more sense. Um, and so I ended up kind of abandoning just a, a human with basically like a scuba diving outfit or a neoprene uh outfit on that kind of conforms to his body. I, I, I put him in something that feels more like a, it could double as a stasis chamber and also a, um, uh, a neck or a stasis chamber and a armored, um, uh, outfit or, you know, um, prosthesis. The, the fourth one, um, speaking of prosthesis, is um, I was thinking. I mean, if he got, if this guy got into an accident, maybe he lost limbs or he he got disfigured or something. Like, let's let's take it as far as we can go. It's like you know, based on the story, um, maybe he, he was able. You know, the hospital was able to save his upper half, and you know that maybe that's part of what made him go insane is not having you know, some of his body left and, um, or not having uh, major parts of his body left and he had to kind of figure out a way to keep himself alive <clears throat> and mobile at the same time. So, um, just, you know, going to the extremes, that's part of the fun of thumbnails is like, you know, you get to really see, um, see and explore things you may not have thought of if somebody had said initially to you, hey, design Mr. Freeze. Um, you know, most people, when they think of Mr. Freeze, just like myself, I think of the goggles. I think of um, a glass helmet. And then I think of, you know, whatever kind of strange outfit he's wearing, you know, one of those 1950s Martian outfits uh, with his little freeze ray gun to... Um, <clears throat> make him look like Mr. Freeze. So now we're getting into new territory for this guy. Um, <clears throat> so 
uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that I don't want to get too far into with um, when I talk about thumbnails because there are a lot of design um, uh, considerations to take in, to, to to consider, um, and uh, I think that um, <clears throat> for this class, I want to kind of keep things basic, and I want to keep things more um, <clears throat> revolved around you getting a lot of pencil mileage, you understanding the basics, um, and being very comfortable with that before you move on to a more advanced class. Um, and thumbnails, to me, can be the most exciting part because that's where, and the hardest part because that's where most of the thinking happens. Um, and it's you know you don't have to sit there and try to make a really really nice drawing it's it's all about being loose and quick um, but you know later on you'll learn more about how to apply more advanced design ideas and um, and other in the other more advanced class and uh, and hopefully you'll be ready for it at that point <clears throat> I have no idea what I'm doing here. This one is just like, I'm making it like a flower vase or something. See, you can see though, like, this is a good example. I'm just creating stuff. I'm erasing it. I'm going back into it, trying to find shapes, you know, uh, not necessarily looking at it as, hey, I need to create a head. Hey, I need to create a body. Just making something random, seeing what works, seeing what part you like, seeing what part you don't. You know, I kind of see a head in there. I kind of see a chest and a pelvis. You know, but still, um, still kind of up in the air. But you can see, even based on these five here, that we're starting to evolve. We're definitely, we've definitely broken the 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 unoriginal barrier. I think. Um, when it comes to Mr. Freeze, because he's definitely doesn't look not right now like any of the Mr. Freeze first Mr. Freeze designs I've seen online, <clears throat> and most of them I have to say are very similar to each other. Um, Here, I think I'm, I think I'm kind of going for a, a more heavier design. Like, you know, he's more uh, more of a brute uh, archetype kind of body style. Um, very heavy arms, heavy chest and shoulders. <clears throat> I was thinking, you know, here is where... Um, I'm trying to make more sense out of everything uh, because you know, I want him to be humanoid, but also I want him to feel like he's in the stasis chamber and he's also in something that can, you know, feel threatening. Um, and so giving him the, the bulk to feel threatening, giving him a big bubble to kind of feel like, you know, he's in some kind of stasis bubble, some kind of uh, cryogenic bubble and you know and i was thinking you know this one is floating i think this particular design like he's, he's floating he's got like little jets on his uh pelvis to make him float and that um maybe he's kind of like the fourth design where he's just got he just has an upper body and um isn't necessarily need legs since he has these little propulsion devices underneath him. Um, but his design ends up feeling, feeling a little bit more relatable, a little bit more humanoid.
kind of, uh, you know, you'll notice too, I'm putting down shadows um, just to kind of have them sit on something, sit, sit in the world somehow. And also you can tell by how I place my shadows with certain things, that certain things are floating, certain things are not. Um, <clears throat> so it gives you, and you immediately see what the purpose of the design is. Um, for the thumbnails too, like I'm not spending a ton of time on each one, you know, I mean, I wouldn't recommend spending more than five, you know, two to five minutes on a thumbnail, just depending on how much, you know, detail you're trying to get in there. But like, you really don't want to get uh, a high level of detail. And you notice I'm very zoomed out on the thumbnails. I'm not um, super close to them, and part of the reason, you know, that's the main reason is to not c commit myself to um, noodling. You know, I want to just at a very high level see what the shapes are, the basic shapes are, the, the, um, the general look, and, and if I get it and understand what I'm um, what I've created, and I, and I kind of like that as a its own little thumbnail, then I'll move on to the next one. But you know, I don't really get further along than, um, you know, creating these kind of little lights or um, little lines. Um, I let some of the texture that I've created accidentally and <clears throat> um, any kind of like thinner lines to help to create the detail. Um, and when you, you know, if you were to zoom in to any of these thumbnails, it would look like crap um, if they don't already. And uh, um, that's fine. You know, I, I'm not necessarily going to be showing my thumbnails. Like when I'm working, I'm not necessarily, show, you know, thinking, hey, I'm going to put these in my portfolio. Or I'm going to show, you know, put these in a art of book or something like that. I mean, <clears throat> and even if they were, in an art of book or if they were in my portfolio, they'd still be small. I wouldn't, you know, blow these things up to be a larger size. The, I mean, people know when they see thumbnails that they're meant to be ideas. Um, and in a way, you know, this is the kind of the, the, I think the thumbnail stage is the, the core of what a concept artist should be about. Um, <clears throat> oh, I remember what Carlos said to me. You know, it's just like, don't be, you know, the difference between, um, Carlos said, the difference between a concept artist and an illustrator is a concept artist isn't afraid to make um, an ugly drawing. And that's what thumbnails are. They're, fairly ugly drawings. I mean, they're very loose. They're not refined. Um, and an illustrator is more like somebody who wants to really make a, do one thing and make it a final image with, without, you know, I have to say, you know, more or less without doing tons of iterations of it on it. I mean, you know, I'm sure there'll be, you know, some illustrators that will disagree with me um, where they do tend to do some thumbnails, but I think for the most part, concept artists, do lots and lots and lots of thumbnails until, you know, the art director is very happy with what they're doing. <clears throat> um, and then they choose a direction, I should say. So I think thumbnails are really the core of, um, uh, of what a concept artist is and kind of should be about. And then from there, you can have fun and, and make rough images and then final images when I say rough, I mean, you know, you spend more time on it, um, and then you end up making your final render, maybe from that. Um, but this is where, this is the hard part, and it's also the most experimental, and, and almost some, uh, sometimes the, the most fun part, is the uh, thumbnail process. That's not to say that I'm not going to, you know, get, you know, we're not going to be spending time um, developing these things further uh, in, in more detail. It's just that um, 
I think as some anybody who wants to learn how to create cool and original ideas and, and possibly become a concept artist, you need to really be comfortable with this particular process. Because um, this is where you know originality comes from. I mean, I can't tell you, like, you know, I was saying earlier, how many uh, iterations of Mr. Freeze that look exactly the same, whether, you know, they're drawn by um, a very famous artist or they're drawn by, you know, a cartoon studio. It's like they all pretty much look like, you know, what you'd expect for a Mr. Freeze, like, a, and there's something there that you don't want to change too much or else he's just going to look um, unrecognizable. But at the same time, um, you, you know, unfortunately, I think a lot of studios tend to be way too safe and choose, choose designs that are um, too similar. So another major um, Im important aspect of thumbnailing is silhouette. <clears throat> um, from far away, you know, say you, you know, have this character far away, you do a long shot or you um, uh, or you see it this guy say on a movie poster and he's lit from the back and he's kind of just just has a silhouette you want to we want your character to read and the first read is always your silhouette and your second read is um a breakup and, and uh, tonal breakup which is kind of what i'm doing here with the light dark <clears throat> um, um and, and, and shape differences um and then uh, you have your third read, which is your high detail. You're, you get in there and you really uh, spell everything out. <clears throat> so first read is the most important because if you can't read them, you can't read your character from there, from a silhouette point of view or from a distance, um, it's not gonna be memorable. It's not gonna be recognizable and um, and those things are very important <clears throat> if you're trying to, um, especially when you're trying to do a main character. Um, like look at Batman silhouette. Silhouette is very recognizable. Look at the silhouette for Alien, from Alien, um, Aliens. <clears throat> um, very recognizable silhouette. Um, so that's huge. You gotta make sure your silhouette reads and that it's very clear um, and that it, it supports what the character is about. Um, for this guy, you know, this little glass helmet, um, like if you look at the very first one, that's kind of a clear Mr. Freeze, you know, recognizable Mr. Freeze um, uh, look. <clears throat> and all of these have, you know, for the most part, you know, the second one, um, you know, let's not look at the second one because it's similar to the first one, but all these have very different silhouettes and very clear ones. Um, here, uh, I'll just talk about this in some drawing this. Um, 